Hello, uh, today we're going to make a hot potatoes crossword and what you have to do is select J cross it will open up what looks like a grid and what you have to do is um, first of all type in a title and we'll do the old favourite capitals quiz and you don't do what you think you don't fill in your answers on the grid and work out all the spacing yourself you actually use this instruction here manage grid and when we use the automatic grid maker you simply type in the answers one on each line so if we do Paris London Madrid and we'll have Edinburgh not many not many clues there um, for our crossword but that'll do for now you could change the grid size if you had particularly long answers or an awful lot of answers then you may want a larger grid in our case this is more than big enough and we're going to tell it now to make the grid so I'll give that a click and what it does is it works out where these words can slot into each other onto the crossword looks a bit daft I realize because our, our grid is large there but when it comes up with the final crossword it will be much smaller and, and more uh, proportionate the next thing we have to do of course is enter the clues and we have a button here that says add clues give that a click and you simply select each answer and type in the clue or the question for the, the person who's going to be doing the crossword. So here we've got what is the capital of Scotland? And then you click OK. And you work your way through each clue. So we'll have Madrid next. So what is the capital of Spain? And then OK. And then we'll click on London. What is the capital of London? That was wrong, wasn't it? It's what is the capital of England? Okay. And then for Paris, what is the capital of France? I'll just quickly read through them. We've got all the correct information. We've got a clue for each answer. And if we're happy with that, we select OK. And we're now finished. We need to save what we've done. And we save two versions of this file. The first version by clicking the, the disk is basically the, the raw file that you can come back in and, and add more clues to or make corrections. So we'll call this Capitals Quiz Master. And I've created a folder just for this so that all the, the files related to it are saved in the same location. So now we need to save a version that the learner would see and this basically is a web page. So we click the little web button, the little blue button here. And again in the same location it's assumed what you want to call it, but this time it's saving it as a web page. You can change the name if you like. So we don't want to call it master. We want to call it uh, maybe student. So it's capital quiz student. So we know it's the student version of the file. And we save that. You're now being asked if you'd like to see that finished exercise. So we will give this a click. View the exercise in my browser. And up pops the crossword. You can't see the clues. And that's because the person has to click on the number and the clue pops up for them. So they type in their answer and enter and it pops it into the grid. So there we have what's capital of France. Now they may enter a wrong answer so let's see what happens. It puts it in the grid but clearly any other clues they pop in would override that if they got the correct answer. So for if we did four across capital of Scotland is Edinburgh then that overrides the incorrect clue and at the end if when they're finished or if they think they've got something wrong they can check the answers it gives them a, a, an idea of how much they've got correct so far but it also then blanks out any incorrect ones so when we choose OK the wrong Italy answer has gone and they've been left able to do that one again so they can correctly enter that there is also a hint button it's a bit of a cheat if we do two down they can press hint and they'll get the first letter of the answer appearing you can disable that if you don't want the hint to be there. It can sometimes be useful depending on your learners. Check your answers. It's saying 91% because we did get one answer wrong to begin with and it's, it's weighted to tell you whether you got it all right the first time or whether you'd made a mistake. And that is a hot potatoes crossword.